Hello everyone and welcome to History with Led, where the show where we talk about history with your host Led. Now in this very special episode of History with Led, we're not only going to talk about history, which I know you all came here in this channel for, but we're also going to talk about one of the most interesting, if not the most interesting topics that mankind has ever discussed in its entire entirety of existence, um, which is the, our favorite subject, science. That's right, in this special episode, we're going to talk about some pretty basic scientific history. And what better way, <coughs> excuse me, to talk about some scientific history than the most basic um, particle that we, ha we have ever known, which is the atom which as we all know is the most basic particle in the universe or at least as what we know as humans um, so if we're going to talk about this very elementary particle of ours we're going to go all the way back long before we even existed all the way back to 400 BC with our very first proponent Democritus so as we all know Democritus is the first ever proponent of the atomic theory now uh, while a lot of people are saying that Democritus is the first, very first proponent of the, the, the atomic theory, a lot of people, what a lot of people don't know is that Democritus was actually inspired by his mentor and uh, also, and also the unofficial, uh, very first uh, Greek philosopher that introduced and proposed the atomic theory, which is his mentor, Leucippus. So Leucippus and Democritus um, proposed that if you got basically if you cut a rock into very small particles, it would be cut and 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 cut into smaller, 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 smaller pieces until you, it comes to a point wherein um, it, does, it doesn't get cut anymore or it cannot be divided into any, any more smaller pieces of that rock. So as you can see, their proposed atomic particle is based on, is based more on <coughs> Wow, I have a very weird talk today. It's based more on um, the uh, reasoning than the actual science itself. So, Democ so Democritus called this um, state of, or this state of indivisibleness as atomos, which in their language uh, practically says practically means indivisible. So they said that um, this this small atomos is. Um, what makes every every single thing in in the planet or in the universe and it is um covered by all of these empty spaces so of course in the uh, during their time which is which was 400 bc we never really had any sort of primitive we never really had any sort of technologies or we never had the scientific equipment to actually test this theory but um at the time it was very it was very debated for the lack of its um, scientific basis but um, with regards to its logical reasoning and with regards to its um, technicality it was pretty much very widely accepted um, towards um, uh, when it comes to uh, talking about basic uh, chemical properties or basic uh so our next proponent did not go very far from Democritus if I remember correctly so Democritus was 400 BC and the next proponent is what? Hmm. 1803 that's right that's not too big of a very that's not too big of a time lapse isn't it? so an English um, scientist named John Dalton has once again proposed another atomic theory which was heavily inspired by Democritus theory of atomos. So according to John Dalton, the, uh, the this, uh, atoms are these tiny solid balls. So basically, when he said that a tiny solid ball, it's, it is one very small ball where um, there is no other particle. It's just this indivisible small ball. <clears throat> and according to his four laws, atoms are indivisible. Um, this, uh, atoms of one element are all the same. Atoms of different elements are different and compounds formed by combining atoms so aside from that aside from that Dalton is also also known for his law of conservation of mass and law of proportion so fast forward to another very minimal time-lapse very minimal 
um, what's that? So once again, we are going to skip a, a couple of few years, just a couple of them, like a century. And we are going straight into 1904, where another scientist in the name of J.J. Thompson has once again introduced another major contribution to the atomic, or to the history of the atom. Um, so according to J.J. Th J. J. Thompson, was the very first scientist to discover the electrons. So he discovered this by discovering if this uh, a positive positive particle, and according to him, that if there is a positive charge on a, on a on a certain certain object, um, it would also have this negative particle with it. Although he wasn't able to check upon and look upon the positive particle, he was able to encounter the negatively charged particle, which he named electron. So fast forward to 1911 where Ernest Rutherford uh, finally saw this, um, re saw this positive particle and he called it protons. And he also said that these protons can be found in this very small, part, this very small part of the atom, very small part of the atom which he called the nucleus. So according to him, atoms have positively charged particles in the center and it's also mostly space on the outer part of the atom. So this paved the, paved the way for the very first model in the atom that we have, which was the solar system model. Um, then we're gonna pass forward to 19... To 19. <clears throat> Rutherford also altered J.J. Thompson's Raisin Bond model, which I may have forgot to mention in this video earlier, but at least now I got it, alright? So he created a second model, which was the solar system model which was also the most popular illustration of the atom as uh, well specifically for me because you know I watch a lot of Jimmy Neutrons and you know Jimmy Neutron has a solar system model of an atom for his t-shirt so this is the one where there is this uh, very small ball in the center and there are a lot of orbits surrounding the, um, the nucleus to make up the atoms which um, according to Rutherford is where the electrons pass from so it was also, it was also the one to say that um, the <coughs> electrons move around in this uh, certain orbit. Um, uh, Rutherford, uh, Rutherford found this uh, um, after the, he conducted an experiment which was Rutherford's gold experiment. So uh, this is also the part where I talk, when I talk about the misconception that Rutherford brought up the existence of another particle. Rutherford did not brought up the existence of another particle. Instead, he discovered the existence of this certain particle. So, <clears throat> after Ernest Rutherford, we have James Chadwick. And James Chadwick was the one who discovered the neutrons. As we all know, it is a um, neutrally charged particle. And he also, it was also the one to conclude that the neutron is found in the nucleus. After James Chadwick, we have uh, Niels Bohr who uh, improved Rutherford's model and then um, Rutherford's model and then he uh, he was the one to uh, propose the shell model of the atoms so or the yeah, of the atoms so the he said that electrons move around the nucleus in layers or shells which is uh, uh, which is the one of uh, his model so the the atom is here then it is covered by this circles which he referred to as shells and this shells contains all the valence electrons so in 1932 we are now provided by uh, Edwin Schrodinger I may have definitely slain the pronunciation of that name so forgive me kind sir with the modern view of the atom which is the nucleus and its center and instead of the electrons traveling across various lines or orbits or shells um, he said that um, uh, the electrons move around this electron cloud so uh, so unlike um, electrons moving on a fixed pattern they're scattering in this cloud of uh, various energies and forces that um, they, they are traveling on so um, this model is the one that we are uh, using nowadays as it, as it is the model that, or the actual visualization of the atom that is already observable in our microscopes. 
and as for my microscopy it is already out of the scope of this video and as far as we're all concerned that's all about the that's all that can be said for the atomic theory so if you have any comments and suggestions leave them down below smash subscribe smash that like button smash that notification button and see you on the next episode what? You never played Tuber Simulator! <sighs> you know, it's fun, right? I'm not supposed to give my opinion, but give it a try, and then you can tell me if it's good or not. Not convinced yet? Okay. I'll cut you a deal. The game is available for free, and that's a great price!